Confidence is everything in life. Transforming your confidence has the potential to transform the path of your life forever. And in sports, it's even more important. Low confidence can break or make an athlete's career. So in this video, I'm going to review to you how you can build unstoppable confidence within a matter of days, even if you're insecure, introvert, or overthink before playing. This is a scientific process, and no matter what you believe in, anyone can build this following the right process, a process that I'll be revealing to you in this video if you stay until the very end. So, Let's get into it. Whenever I start working with a new athlete, and make sure that we touch on these three important aspects of your development. First is your beliefs. They control what you think and how you behave. Second is your emotional control. Dealing with your emotions is extremely important for you as an athlete. And lastly, your perception of competence. This is extremely important for you to keep making progress and believe you have the skills where you're on the spot. So. The first one, building better beliefs. This process is the one thing that can change your life forever because this is basically influencing the way you think, the way you feel, and the way you behave 100% of the time. If you're not able to figure out which beliefs you have, when they impact you and start building better ones, you are always walking into the same thing and never making progress. Imagine that you believe they're not so good or that this is extremely common in athletes imagining that people don't think you are good enough. If you're constantly thinking and feeling like this all the time, all of your actions will align with this. Now imagine that deep inside you really doubt that you are capable or good enough to make your dreams happen. Now imagine how you're gonna feel when you are in a trial, when you are playing the most important game of your career. If you feel like you are not that good or that you're not capable of making it happen, you are going to choke. You are going to play safe. You are going to overthink about what other people are going to think about you. And if that's how you feel and that's how you behave, you will never get close to your full potential. Now, imagine you are able to change this. You are going from an athlete who overthinks, who is insecure, he doesn't know what to do and thinks that everybody is judging them to an athlete that trusts themselves, doesn't care about mistakes and actually becomes better after making a mistake and has full confidence that you have the ability to make your dreams come true. Imagine the actions that these two different athletes are going to have when they're playing the most important games of their career. Imagine they're playing against each other. If the first athlete has 20-30% less skills than the second athlete, this athlete is going to lose. If you don't trust yourself, you will not use the best of your skills. And this is the first step acknowledging your current beliefs. Pay attention to what you think, how you behave, how you respond to pressure, and how you are thinking when you are most stressed. Those things will reveal to you how your beliefs control you. We have a pattern of thinking. The beliefs that we have, they control how we think. If you are able to pay attention and understand the thoughts that are more often in your minds, you are able to understand what is the belief that you have. If all the time you are thinking about proving others wrong, you think that people are not seeing how good you are or that they don't respect you as much, you probably believe that other people don't like you or that you have to prove something to other people. If you're constantly thinking, questioning your ability, overthinking if you're gonna make it and wondering what failure looks like or how your future is going to look like if you fail, then there's a good chance that you think that you are not so good or that you think that you don't have the ability to make your dreams happen. Once you understand the beliefs that you have right now, it is time to build different ones. Basically, you're going to choose a way of thinking and trying to reinforce that. Now, obviously, this is a summary of the entire process that you should go through, but the idea here is to open your eyes of how much this is impacting your career. If I'm able to do this in this video, I did my part, and then it's up to you to commit to the process of improving your mental game. So once you define what is the new way of thinking, what is the new belief, it's time to start practicing. Just like anything in life, repetition is key for development. If you choose to develop the idea that you are always learning, growing, and that mistakes and failure are part of the journey, you start reinforcing that every single day. I'll give you two tools to make this happen so you make sure they are consistently practicing this way of thinking. The first one is using the growth check, which is basically a journal that you check, that you make sure that you are following the right strategy, that you are thinking in that specific way. Basically, at the end of every day, you grab a notebook or you grab even on your phone 
and you analyze were you behaving in alignment with that way of thinking, with the belief of I'm growing, learning, and mistakes and failures are part of my process. All right, so today was a good day, and then you acknowledge the good things you did. In practice, I was able to overcome that mistake I made. In the game, I was able to channel my focus into trying again and not overthinking about what other people are going to think. And set a way of improvement. In the following day, I can do this. In the following day, I can use visualization before going there. In the next day, I can respond to that challenge with more assertiveness. This is the first tool. The second tool that you can use is called acting as if. Basically, you're going to pretend that you're a character that is playing a role in believing that that is true, in believing that you're always growing, learning, and mistakes and failures are part of the process. So as you go out tomorrow for trainings, for a game, for a trial, you act as if you believe that to be true. And you can even use visualization to prepare for some of the scenarios that you're going to face in the next day. The more used you get to those responses, the more likely you are to have those responses when you are presented with a challenge. The second thing is emotional control, and this is just as important. There are two things that I want you to have in mind. You must have emotional flexibility and emotional endurance. The meaning of those is pretty obvious. Emotional flexibility means that you're able to be flexible, welcoming of new experiences, and adapt in the best way possible. Emotional endurance is you're able to keep going when it hurts, when it's tough, and when you have reasons to give up. If you're able to combine those two, you are better able to build better beliefs and you improve significantly your confidence. The first of them, emotional flexibility, is you are not to fix on a specific demand or on a specific expectation that you have on how things should turn out. So, to illustrate that situation, think about you want the game to go in a specific way. And then, when the game begins, your team gets score and you have one man down. Now, if you're playing 10 against 11, you're losing the game, how do you respond to that? If you were too obsessed with a specific expectation, you might choke because now things are much harder. What are you going to do? If you have emotional flexibility, you're better able to channel your attention to the things that actually matter and put all your energy into being the best that you could be at that specific time. This is emotional flexibility. The way that you can practice and obtain this is by thinking, how can I do my best now? Obviously, this is not as simple as it sounds, and there are other strategies that we can employ to make sure that this happens. So, if this is the end goal, how can I be my best self now? How can I do my best at this moment? How do I get there? The first one is welcoming the experiences. If you are too resistant in accepting what just happened, then it is a lot harder for you to channel your focus into that. The second thing is being the present moment. If you are stuck in how things could turn out if that player wasn't sent off at the beginning of the game, or if you had just intercepted that pass in the middle, they wouldn't have scored. This blocks your performance. If you're always thinking about the past or thinking about the future, you are not going to perform your best. It is extremely important that you channel your attention into the present moment. You can practice this every single day and in fact, most athletes train the opposite of this by consistently multitasking or engaging in activities that require a short attention span. Think about it. Your brain is always adapted to the situations that are exposed your brain to. If every single day you spend hours on Instagram, you spend hours on social media, watching shorts, watching reels, you are training the ability of your brain to not sustain longer periods of attention. And the way that you do the opposite of that is by doing the opposite of this activity, is maintaining your attention and activity for a longer period. Mindfulness is the best way that you can accomplish this. In fact, when you're doing mindfulness, you are actually strengthening the part of your brain that is responsible for attention and control. If you are able to do this consistently, you're much better prepared for doing that during the game. The second one, emotional endurance, is basically the outcome of your ability to maintain your efforts under stress. How do you do that? Practice. I love the idea of expanding your comfort zone. Right now, you have a limit that is comfortable for you. Doing more than that makes you to leave your comfort zone. And you're not supposed to leave your comfort zone all the time mindlessly. You are supposed to expand your comfort zone. So now, you are more comfortable doing things that before weren't as comfortable for you. Take the example of taking cold showers. 
If you're starting today, it is very stressful. If you're doing that after 100 days, it doesn't become easy, but it becomes a lot easier than before. You are expanding your comfort zone. Lastly, your perception of competence matters a lot. And the tricky part S is how you perceive yourself to be and not actually how good you were. If you perceive that you had a lot of success in the past in that specific activity, you are much more confident to make it happen again. But even if you were successful several times, but you don't perceive that to be true, then you don't perceive yourself as being successful in that specific field, whatever it is, it could be being successful at football. It could be being successful at taking penalties. It could be being successful at playing away games. All of those are situations that you can either perceive that you were successful with those or that you were not successful with those. The better you are at realizing that you were successful in the past in similar situations, the more comfortable you are to be in that position again. So how do we make that happen? The most common mistake that I see athletes making is comparing to waters all the time. This destroys your perception of competence because you are always comparing something that took you a lot of years, a lot of effort, happened once, to a variety of different athletes that were only looking at their final result. You don't know their genetics, their opportunities, how many times they failed before, how they feel about it. You're basically comparing something that took you a lot of work to something that only took you to open Instagram and see how successful they were. If you're consistently exposing yourself to that or overthinking about others, you never have the perception that you were successful. And the way that I would deal with this is by focusing on your own process. The more you think, the more time you spend in analyzing and thinking about your own progress, the less you're going to compare to others. How do we do that? Set your own goals, using your journal every single day, analyzing how you're making progress and how you can become better, visualize your own performances. All of those things are going to channel your attention into yourself and not to everybody else who's doing something similar or something better than you. This is an ability that will change your performance, that will change the way you think and give you a lot more confidence to outperform your opponents. So how you perceive your own ability, how good your ability of dealing with comparison is, and how able you are to focus on your own process are keys to a strong mindset. If you want my personal help in completely changing your mindset and ultimately achieving a higher level of performance, click the first link in the description and check out all the semi-pro, pro and amateur athletes that I have helped with. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.